welcome to Woodshop 101, a woodworking audio podcast geared toward the hobby weekend woodworker. Our hosts for the show are Jeremy Crawford and Drew Shore. Join these two different craftsmen for a lighthearted banter about everything in woodworking, online education, and how they produce content. Topics could include the latest news, tips, tricks, and designs to include furniture, crafts, and shop projects. Welcome to episode number 14. Today we're going to do something a little different. Um, instead of picking a topic and kind of talking to you guys um, about that topic, we've actually each picked out about five videos from YouTube that we really enjoy, and we're going to kind of talk about them and uh, tell you guys what we think about them and why you should go over and watch them. All right. I would also like to remind you, if you listen to the show on iTunes, to please uh, give us a five-star rating. It helps us reach a greater audience. All right, so let's jump into it. Um, I think we're going to try to keep this show pretty quick today. Um, it's been about three weeks since our last episode. Um, summer's starting to wrap up and things are just getting hectic. Um, but we definitely didn't want to miss a show. And we thought doing something a little different would would uh, lighten the load and, and give you something else to listen to and then want to go watch. So how are you today, Drew? I'm doing pretty good. I've been busy just like you, which is one reason why recording the past few weeks has been kind of difficult. Yeah, yeah every, everything's getting pretty hectic and seems like it's either my job or plans that have come up that we do on the weekends. Uh, I I totally get that. I mean, it's like every day there's something else popping up and I guess that's the price you pay for having a family. Um, and, you know, I I think that's why we started this podcast together because we're both pretty flexible. Um, we have families and we know that we can't stick to a rigorous schedule all the time. Yeah, so, rigorous is a good word for it. <laughs> yeah, it's we're very flexible and fluid here. <laughs> so, yeah, and so most of you know that we record on Thursday nights um, every other, the fir- pretty much the first and the third week of the month. Here we are. I'm recording the first episode um, for August, and we're floating in the second week, and we're actually recording on Sunday afternoon. Um, so when we talk fluid, we we can change it around a little bit and, and make do and still get you guys a quality show out. So let's uh, talk quickly about what's going on in our shops. Drew, what do you got going on? Um Right now, I'm still in an organizational phase. Uh, I am actually in the middle of recording a video for my channel for the first time in about a month and a half because, like I said, I took some time off and now I'm trying to get back into it. But I recently acquired some uh, Pixis cabinets or drug cabinets from a a hospital that um, they were kind of upgrading their systems because the Pixis cabinets that they owned, the business went out of business, so they weren't able to get them serviced anymore, so they had to buy a new cabinet. And my brother got them all free and he ended up getting six of them and I took two. My dad took one, and my brother kept the other three. Uh, but they're they're filled with drawers. I mean, from head to toe, they're filled with drawers, and they're about seventy four inches tall by about twenty four inches wide, and it's about twenty four inches deep. So it's it, tons of storage, and uh, I had to rig it up to where I could open up the drawers because those Pixis cabinets are are locked from the inside, and you have to figure out a way to get them to open (laughs) so i've been doing that today and uh, loading them up with some of the things that are in my toolbox because it's falling apart so right now that's that's pretty much it is just organization and recording my first video in about a month and a half are these cabinets going to replace the plans to do some more shop cabinets to to replace the uh, black racks that you have uh no (laughs) <laughs> no, they are actually covering up my windows uh, in the garage because I don't I don't like people being able to come up to those windows and look inside and see what's in there. Uh, so they're just the right width and depth to cover up the windows, uh, and I couldn't put any cabinetry there anyway. So uh, they were kind of a bonus cabinet. Yeah. Well, and plus, you know, when you record um, video, it's hard to control the light when you have light coming in from the window plus your overhead lights and that's always changing Mm -hmm. you know as the sun goes down or or, or goes up it casts shadows through that window so it's going to be harder um so 
being able to control that light and not allow that light in is definitely a plus and probably will lighten the load on you when it comes to editing your videos. Definitely, especially since my router table is over in that area. Uh, I have to be creative whenever I was filming using my router, but now I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Well, there's been a lot going on in my shop lately um, and outside my shop. Um, I've, due to being out of town the last few weekends, um, kind of wiped out the last part of of July and the first part of August. Um, I've yet to to finish the uh, jewelry arm wall for my wife. Um, that's going to be set to finish hopefully this week. Um, and I started a few pizza pills. Um, so that's going to come next. So th there's been a lot of starting things, not a lot of finishing, but you know, I, I get about on my days off and that's the really the only time I can work in the shop right now because I only get an hour or two a, a day. So we're looking at an hour or two a week to get in the shop because it gets so hot here in the afternoon. We're, we're going through a extremely, um, bad heat spell right now and we'll get up and it'll be 106 in the afternoon. I just can't work in that. I'm, I'm miserable. So my best foot forward wouldn't be put that work wouldn't be as fun and I'm going to get burnt out again. Um, so I'm actually going tomorrow to pick up an air conditioner and I'm going to be installing an AC this week in the shop and hopefully that will um, bring it down to a manageable temperature to be able to work in, out there for a prolonged amount of time and you know I, I really didn't want to do that especially because I'm in a rental house so I bought a portable AC that I'm, I'm going to have to build some duct work um, to exhaust it since I don't have a window but I had to do something. I'm, I'm, I just took in another large commission um, when I, and I know I keep saying I don't want to do that, but it's a re repeat business, and there's few customers that I'm gonna continue to do work for them just because they're they're good friends, and you know I, they're coming to me for a reason. I've obviously produced good enough work to for them that they want to come back, so I'm not gonna turn them down. Um, and he gives me a lot of flexibility on the design um, aspect and, and pretty much any material that I want to use. Um, so in order to get that done and get that fireplace mantle for my neighbor done, I've got to get some AC out in that shop so I can work. Um, so I can work at nights too. So even on my days that I don't, don't work my day job, I can get out and work for a few hours at night. So there's been a lot of behind the scenes things going um not a lot of woodworking in the last two weeks except for last thursday i actually jumped out with habitat for humanity and um roofed a house for them so that's cool that roofing business is hot <laughs> yeah yeah it was but you know I, I went out there with a bunch of guys um that i work with and we knocked out an entire roof in about two and a half or three hours, um, which is quick. Mm -hmm. But you get people out there that that can take direction pretty easily and know how to work quickly. Um, and we we just knocked it out. I mean, mind you, we didn't have to take off an existing roof. It's a new structure, and I'll put a picture down in the show notes for you guys to, to take a look at that. Um, you know, it's a new construction, a, a new construction. So all we had to do was nail the plywood down, roll out the felt paper and then throw on shingles. Um, you know, there, we didn't have to do any of the finishing work. We didn't have to, um, put any of the, um, exhaust, um, vents on the, on the top or anything. Somebody else would come in and do all that. So it was, Good to get outside the shop early in the morning and get something done. Um, and it just kind of motivates you to do something else. And now, you know, I want to figure out a way to do 
maybe a, a furniture build or something like that or, or, or um, something small, maybe do an auction to donate some money to the Habitat for Humanity um, or donate a piece of furniture to one of the people that's receiving a house. I don't know. I've kind of been thinking about it um, over the last few days. But, um, you know, like I was telling you earlier, Drew, that besides that, I haven't had a lot of time. My son's been in and out of the doctor. Um, in fact, he was in the hospital on Friday uh, for being sick. So, you know, once we get him well, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plan on moving in the direction of doing something that will benefit Habitat for Humanity some way um, or another. And then I'm going to start cranking out these projects because um, we're are possibly going to be moving in about three months um, because I'll be getting out of the Coast Guard. Yeah, and that'll we, come and, come faster than you think. Yeah, and if we move out of the area, um, I can't. I don't really want to be building a commission somewhere else and have to drive it back down here to deliver it. So I want to get those commissions done um, and and get them delivered. And, you know, I'll still take commissions here if I can, if they're small enough and manageable enough that I can mail them and not worry about, about that. But we really don't know what's going to happen with us in, in about three months. So I got to get moving and get some stuff done, um, get some projects done because, you know, when that three months comes and we go, maybe go to Dallas or wherever we go, I don't want the movers showing up and packing up half completed projects it, because you never know the outcome of that project once, once it moves. You know, once I get it delivered to me again, you know that half finished table may not make it. You know, it mm. may fall apart. Um, so you know that that hall table, that sofa table, it, it will get finished it, it, in the next three months. It has to. So all right, I hold you to it. Yeah. Well, ho- hopefully. I, it, that's one of the quicker projects that, that could be done. Like I just need to cut, cut the top to final dimension, bevel the edges, sand the top, and then throw on some paint and stain. Like it honestly, in a total of like two or three days worth of work could be done. But like I said before, it's not really print bringing in any money. Like it's not a guarantee. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's gonna, it's gonna sit back. I don't really know what to do with it right now, so I'm in a rush to finish it. <laughs> so once, once it comes up and I'm actually going to sit down, I'm probably going to get a calendar and, and create myself a timeline. Like, all right, here's the deadline to finish this project. Here's the deadline to finish that project. Um, so I know where I'm at in, in time for those three months. Cause weeks, just tend to fly by right now, um, especially with two kids. So I'm yeah, gonna... it's kind of funny you brought that stuff up because remember we had talked about goal setting once before and my wife and I had been actually going over uh, in our heads and what we need to do to set goals to make our lives a little easier and make my channel flow better and all yeah. my projects come come forth easier instead of having to think of them at the last minute. So, I, yeah. I, I think, you know, I've we've talked about like I really want to get into more videos, um, and I just never find the time to be able to complete a project start to finish. So I think over the next few months, as I do these smaller projects, um, as as smaller sub projects within those bigger projects pop up, um, I'm going to record those things, some kind of like tips and tricks, and put those out there just to start creating that content and getting it out there. Um, and one of the ones I know I'm going to do um, is on the pizza pill. I have a knot in one of the wood and I'm going to fill it. Um, and, and so I'm going to record that on how to, um, stabilize a knot, um, in a piece of lumber. You know, it only may end up being a five or 10 minute video, maybe a three minute video, but it's something to get content out there. Um, and that way I'm not, I'm just kind of taking that end goal and, and modifying it a little bit to help me get to that larger piece. Um, Because if I keep saying, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it, and I never find the time to record a project, then I'm just going to keep saying I'm going to do it. So I might as well take smaller steps to get get there instead of trying to do it all at once. So I know exactly how you feel. 
so there so i i take it there's probably going to be a lot of hopefully moving parts and and shuffling around and and schedule changes between my show and your show and and hopefully in the end game you know at the end of the year we'll both be in a better place and we can look back and see the leaps and bounds that we've gone through exactly so as you guys can tell we've got a lot going on (laughs) a lot going on but uh, let's let's go ahead and get down to the nuts and bolts of this uh, particular episode. Our, our topic, like Jeremy had mentioned, is basically uh, five videos that we have picked on YouTube to uh, that, that we like and watch and want to refer you guys to go ahead and watch them. And you might even find subscribing to their channel. Um, the five videos that, that I picked really aren't uh, all woodworking. Some of them are, are kind of outside the realm of woodworking but they're still fun and uh, I always look forward to a new post whenever they whenever they uh, put one out uh, Jeremy are all yours uh, woodworking related or do you have some out out of the box thinking videos too um, no um, all mine some form or fashion are woodworking related or have no they're all woodworking related yeah That's <laughs> the, the base of it the ba- I mean the base of it is building something out of wood, whether they built, use other types of material in it, but something is still being created out of wood um, or has to do with woodworking. And, and which is kind of funny that, you know, when, when we approached the subject, you know, I, I just said, you know, let's, let's just pick five videos. And in back of my head, I'm thinking, well, we'll just pick five woodworking videos. And you send me your five videos. I'm like, yo, that, that, that's just crazy to see the different, ways our minds think and you went with like (laughs) five videos that i think somebody will benefit from um you know whether it be woodworking or or any kind of information i went with okay what's the five best woodworking videos that i think somebody will like to watch and i mean believe it or not i I actually sat down and watched all five of your videos and (laughs) i i intentionally didn't send you the links to mine um because maybe that'll give you something to look forward to after the show to go watch. There you go. Um, but uh, like you said, let's just get down to it. Like, let's go um, one video a piece until we get through the through the list. All right. So what's, well, let's uh, start. Let's start with you. Go ahead. All right, I think my first video is from I like to make stuff, and I, I've been following his channel. And if y'all didn't know, he's part of the Making It podcast. Um, His is how to make gliders. And this is one of those ones I said kind of uses other material. He makes a glider, like just a little handheld glider on a CNC machine out of balsa wood. um, And he makes one out of styrofoam. And kind of shows you the compare and contrast of how they fly. Um, And he, he makes it on a CNC, but you can definitely make it using like a little coping saw or a fret saw. Um, you could even make it on a bandsaw or a scroll saw. Um, but sometimes I just like watching those little videos. I, I try to get ideas like, well, what could I make that my son would enjoy doing along with me? Well, I could go out and make a couple of these and let them decorate them, and we'll go outside and fly them. So it he definitely takes you along on the build process not knowing what he's doing. <laughs> and he tells you, I don't know, like, well, I'm, I'm just making it and we'll see how it comes out. And so I, I like that kind of shooting from the hip and let's, let's see. Cause in reality, that's what a lot of us do in the shop. We get out there and we just start making something and hopefully it goes the way we want it to go. Mm-hmm. So, all right. What's your first video? Um, first one that I came across, uh, was April Wilkerson's, uh, compass rose stool. And it's kind of funny that yours was a CNC project, too, because that's what this one is. Um, She actually put together her X-Carve that she had sitting in her shop in the box for quite some time because she never had the time to put it together. And now that she's got her shop all cleaned up, she put her uh, CNC together and did a project with it to try it out. And this one in particular was a little, almost like a milking stool. It's just three or, I think it's a four-legged stool, actually. And uh, she engraved a compass rose on the very top. And uh, it actually took her a few tries to get it right, but um, you know you're you're going to get that when you're first learning that thing anyway. Yeah, well, but, and plus uh, you got to build the CNC, so 
you're going to have to work out the bugs of you actually building that and put in it, putting it together. Yeah, and there's been a lot of those inventable CNC X carves uh, out there right now. So you're going to see a lot of videos, but this one in particular, I thought was a very um, if you acquired a CNC, it was going to be a very um, DIY kind of project, and that's what April's all about. Uh, she even learned that straight leg stools were not as attractive as a compound mitered stool, so um, she even showed you how to do all that. So I was I was kind of impressed with how it how it came out and how the CNC made the top of the stool look. I don't know how comfortable it is to sit on. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it looks amazing. All that though, I mean, it, there's a lot of detail to it. Yeah, there there is a lot of detail, and I I actually reached out to April right? and I told her you know she should have um, filled it with like an epoxy, um, maybe colored tint epoxy. But I think it would look really cool having it um, tinted. Um, you know that, that would give a different perspective and maybe make it a little flatter, a little smoother to sit on. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I mean I don't know how comfortable it is to sit on with all the different nooks and crannies because there's, there's a lot of carving out of that. I guess you can always find your direction on your butt. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, what's your next video, dude? I, mine, you know, I talked about, I'm, I'm making a couple pizza pills. So pizza pills have been on the mind. Um, and, and the design I finally decided to model mine after, and I don't know if it'll be exactly is Mark Spagnolo's. Um, but I definitely, um, looked around on YouTube to kind of see different ones creators have made. And one of the ones that um, is a little easier, not necessarily in, as in depth as Mark Spagnolo's is from Woodlogger and his how to make a pizza pill. He keeps the steps very basic um, and doesn't use a lot of compound um, angles or a lot of hand tools to make it. Um, he doesn't do a lot of curves and stuff like that. So, I would say it's a little more beginner friendly. You don't necessarily need as uh, many tools or techniques to make it. And you know, I'm I may after I make these two, I, I may make one and see how it turns out from his design. Um, so, you know, that's I, I, I probably could have filled all five of these videos with pizza pill videos. But <laughs> that wouldn't have been any fun. <laughs> so I, I took the the one I liked the most outside of Mark Spagnolo's, and you know he's Woodlogger. He, he he's a good pres- presenter, and it's basic. So that's that's why I picked it. That's good. So yeah, I've it, seen uh, I've seen Marks before too, and uh, I've I've cooked a, a lot of pizzas just on the the grate of my oven before, and I've always wished that I had some kind of a peel to get it out. But yeah. Well, see, I have the pizza stone, um, and my I, I'm actually making them for my father and my brother, and they both have pizza stones, and that's really what a pizza pill is made to use on is, is a pizza stone. Um, but I don't see why I couldn't use it off of the grate. So maybe you should make you one. Maybe one day. <laughs> yeah, surprise your wife, honey. Here, here's a pizza pill. Yeah, now let's and, make some and- pizza. I'll make it when you finish the jewelry cabinet. Okay, look, if you if you really want to do this, no. that jewelry cabinet is going to be done because all I have left to do is put on the top coat and 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 then uh put on the glaze and one more set of top coat. And well, I'm done. You still owe me one from my assembly table getting finished. Okay. So when I finish the hall table and that <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be done next week i'm just letting you know okay <laughs> all right so what, what was your next video um this one um i'll i'll skip my second one here i'll go to my third um because it's still woodworking and that is a a timeout bench made by trevor carter and it's kind of funny that um i chose this one because i used to make timeout benches when i did craft shows and uh they were they were actually a pretty big hit uh, you wouldn't be <laughs> you'd be surprised how many little kids would come up and sit on that bench, and the parents would just tell them to stay there while they finished, because <laughs> they were just the right height for a little two, three year old. And uh, it had a curved mine had a curved bottom with with uh, slats, and the back of it said time out. And Trevor's was the same way. Uh, he kind of had a curved seat, and the back 
was uh, I, I couldn't tell if he would burn the timeout on there because he didn't go through that. Um, but one of them, he, he had timeout written on. The other one, he didn't. And he didn't really uh, go into detail as to how he did the timeout on the back of his. But mine was all engraved with uh, routering. Uh, I just kind of freehanded timeout on there. And uh, I think he might have wood burned his. But it was just kind of a, a cute little project that it, a beginning woodworker can uh, whip out pretty easily, too. And it would be either a good place to set your... Uh, stuffed animals in your kid's room or actually use it as a timeout bench or having a, just a, a little small little work uh, work piece in the living room for conversation starters. It's just kind of a cute little idea. Yeah, I've that's one of those things you know, I wish I've always built um, and time gets away from you and then they're five years old and there's no need for it. Um, You're going to have to have another kid. I do have another kid, and I don't. <laughs> no, we're done. I do. <laughs> we're done. After, my daughter's it. <laughs> she's, All right. She's already proven to be going to be a pain. <laughs> so we, in fact, me and my wife are talking about it today. That pretty sure she's going to give us the run for our money, and my son's going to cover it up for her. So <laughs> we, we're, we're starting to figure them out, maybe. All right, well, my next one, um, and if you haven't seen uh, Drew on Facebook or myself on Facebook lately, we have both really gotten back into working out and really making a new lease on life. And so I've kind of looked around um, at different videos on YouTube, maybe if uh, things people have created, um, and I came across a very basic um, pull-up bar from John Peters over at uh, John Peters Art and Home and his son got real big into working out and so they built a pull-up bar in the backyard um, you know they constructed I think with uh, some four by fours and put put a metal bar across the top and it was part of the process of um, building like a whole outdoor like Flintstone gym <laughs> So, which that sounds cool. I've always wanted to do, but we'll see if I ever get. I mean, I'm not gonna do it in my small backyard. Like, if I get a place that's got you know, about an acre of land or something, then and I'll definitely set out aside to do it. Because, I mean, as I get older and I work out less and less, you know, my my son's gonna get older, my daughter's gonna get older. You know, eventually we'll have grandkids, and so it it's not something that will just get stopped being used. Somebody mm-hmm. will always use it. Mm-hmm. So I'll have to check that out now. Alright, what uh what's your next one? Um uh this one is a little outside the realm of actual making a project, but for people that have woodworking channels, uh this one would be beneficial, especially if you want to collaborate like Jeremy and I do on this show. Um it is Hannah Hart's five collab tips uh from YouTube Creator Academy. Um, basically it's just a quick 50, like 56, 57 second video on, uh, the basic fundamental tips that you need to know before collabing with somebody. And it's kind of funny when she goes through these tips cause it just kind of makes you giggle when she <laughs> presents it. But like her, her first tip is make sure you know them. Uh, don't collab because they have numbers. Make sure you genuinely like their channel. Uh, make sure you've watched their videos on their channel. Uh, make sure you know their real name. Make sure you're a sub to their channel. And lastly, make sure that you have great communication so you know when the posting is going to be done because you'd hate to uh, have a little miscommunication and then your partner uh, that you collab with post the video before you do and you're kind of left out in the dark and like, I thought we were posting on this day and it should have been this day. Uh so if you if you have a a notion to want to collab with somebody, make sure that you know them well and respect their work and and uh, feel that that's somebody that is a good mesh with you. Don't just collab with somebody because they have high numbers like Steve Ramsey or Mark Spagnuolo or somebody like that. Not saying that these guys aren't genuine guys, but don't pick somebody because they're just high numbers and you want the high numbers uh, because you're collabing with them. 
Yeah. It, I, when I watched that video, it's yeah, she's pretty funny how she presents that because some of those are like pretty basic. Like you would think if you're going to collab with somebody, those are like basic thoughts. Like I need to know that person. Like and it, when she talks about it, like she doesn't have to physically know that person, but you have to have talked to them before. You can't just like reach out and be like, hey, never talked to you before, but hey, you want to uh, collab with me on this? You, know, yeah, you got to have you- some prior communication. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people would just spam you wanting to do a collaboration. So, all right. Well, my next one is going to be from Nick Ferry. Um, and it's, I picked this one because it's been on in the back of my mind. And I, I just, I've kind of watched a lot of different videos trying to figure out really what I want. Um, and that's how to make his uh, table... It's all cross-cut slash miter sled combo. Um, I've been ne- needing to make one, so I've watched a lot of videos over the last year, um, and I really like how he did it. He made his very multi-purpose, and that's what I want for mine. I want mine to be very multi-purpose. I don't want it to be just so strict of here's cross-cuts, you know, use a hand clamp to put on a stop block. Like I want to be able to incorporate those things in there. Um, and so I really like his design. Will I model it exactly after him? I don't know. I don't know if I really need need the the miter part of it. But if I'm there, I might as might just go ahead and build it because um, you never know down the line when I will need it. Um, I mean, I already have a miter sled, but you know, could this one el- eliminate the need to have two separate sleds? So, if you yeah. haven't watched it, I'd definitely, definitely check it out because it's, it's pretty, pretty intricate on how he builds that one. Yeah, I have watched that one actually, um, and, and it just goes to show you that a, a simple jig or a tool um, doesn't have to be made the traditional way. Uh, if you can multi-purpose a jig uh, to do two or three or even four things. Uh, and it just be one thing that you can hang on the wall, and it does th- four jobs. I mean that that's a space saver and also a uh, time saver. So just kind of open your mind whenever you're making jigs and and uh, fixtures for your tools. Just try and think outside the box and add what you can, and and try and get it to do more than just what it's meant to do. Exactly. All right. What's uh, what's your next video? The coolest one that I've uh, found in a long time and I started watching this guy oh probably about a year ago his name is um, uh, DIY Pete is the name of his channel and uh, Pete I'm sorry I can't quite think your name right off the bat but he he lives in um, Montana Um, trying to think of his uh, city Bozeman Bozeman Montana and if you just watch his videos he just lives in beautiful country out there and uh, the particular project that I really enjoyed watching was his uh, concrete LED table. Uh, he actually made a table base, which is a separate video, um, for this particular tabletop. And uh, he shows you how to make the form, pour the concrete, um, prep the area for the uh, acrylic coasters. Because um, he has permanent acrylic coasters. Whenever it's all said and done, the light shines through those coasters. And then he also incorporates a um, uh, like a cooler center area of the table. It goes almost the length of the table, but you can put ice and and uh, your beverages in that area. And he's got the lights running through that as well, so it kind of glows through the ice and uh, the bottles and and whatever you have in that area. And uh, he also has an acrylic piece that goes on top of that. So if you wanted to just set things flush with the tabletop, you can. Yeah, I watch. Uh, I watched that, and it, it was wow. impressive. Wow! Yeah, like it made me. It literally made me want to get out and build one. Yeah, it was very impressive, and I've watched it three or four times just to pick up on anything that I might have missed. But his channel is very, uh, very impressive. He has a lot of production equipment that he uses, and his videos are really put thought out and put together. Uh, so it's a channel worth checking out and worth watching a lot of his stuff. Yeah, and it's one of those things that, like, oh, man, I, I could have – I watched it and I was so inspired. Like, I wanted to get outside and build it. 
and and then I bring myself down to reality that again I may be moving in three months. I'm probably not going to move a concrete table because that thing <laughs> probably weighs 500 pounds. Yeah, that's considered a fixture after you get it installed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it will probably be. I, I know an outdoor table. Whenever we move, um, whether if we stay here in Friendswood, wherever, but we may not stay in the same house. We may decide to buy um, or or move somewhere that more out into the country area and an outdoor table is definitely going to be higher on the priority because we enjoy sitting outside and I might, might, might (laughs) branch out into the concrete world um, (laughs) and try. Like I've done a lot of concrete work, but I've never been confident enough that the concrete work I do is could withstand an overhang like a table or mm-hmm. a countertop. So we'll, we'll see, but it's, it's definitely impressive and it's inspiring. Definitely. So, definitely. Well, what's your last video? Well, my last video, um, and is my last video is about hand planes. And, you know, we've talked about it a lot on, on the show Um, I've written a lot of articles about it. In fact, um, I'm writing an article about it now that will come out maybe this week sometime. And then the possibility of our next show on the topic for it is is, I I could talk about this a little more. Um, It's going to be from Paul Sellers, and it's sharpening and setting up um, a bench plane. So... I really want to get into the hand tool side of woodworking. Sometimes I just don't want to be around loud noises. And, you know, it, it, it's so peaceful to get out there and just do something without the electricity and the power and, and the noise. And I keep telling myself I really want to just go buy a plane. Like, that would be the easiest way. Buy a brand new plane and hone the, hone the blade and get to work. But the sentimental value um, inside me and the respect for my grandfather tells me that the three planes that I got from him deserve to be sharpened and set up and reconditioned the proper way. And Paul Sellers does a good job. He's got many videos that shows you how to do it. Um, And this is one of his latest ones. In fact, I think it's about a month or two months old now. Um, but he doesn't use all the brand new Lee Nilsons. He has a few of them, but he doesn't get all the Lee Nilsons or the Lee Valley and Veritas. Um, he does uses like the old Stanley number four planes and or or number five jacks. You know, he he shows you how to get those old planes tuned up and ready to work. Um, and so I think that's going to be. One of the night, it, I don't know if it'll be a video, um, and I don't know when it'll be, but I think I'll, I'm gonna set aside a day within the next probably month that I can just kind of sit down and tinker with them and, and kind of get them, get them where they're operable. Um, and then you know, once I learn and really get comfortable with it, then I may go out and spend the Three hundred dollars or the two hundred dollars on a brand new plane. Um, well, there's uh, th- like you said, there's there's no sense in buying one of those really expensive planes unless you know the basics on how to use it. Yeah, well, you know, once I get into it, once I start, I may decide, you know, that I really don't like this. Mm-hmm. You know, I really don't want to use a bench plane. Maybe I just want to use a block plane. But and, and a, a two hundred dollar, I mean that. It's quite an investment to something I don't really <laughs> know much about, and besides the fact I got a, a couple great planes, I you know yep. I, got, I have a block plane, um, and I really kind of need to figure out what block plane it is from Stanley. And I've sharpened the blade, but I I really got to just sit down and learn technique on on, on doing um, planing, especially even with a block plane, because um, I got you know, I used the work sharp and I got the blade super sharp. And I was still kind of 
get some terror out. It's kind of jumping around on me, kind of skipping. So I need to kind of figure it out. And I think after watching more videos, I think I installed the blade um, bevel up and it's not a low angle um, block plane. So it should have been, a, it should be beveled down. So mm -hmm. I think that that could be one of the reasons, um, but I need to just get out there and check it out um, and, and see if I have it installed correctly. So, but that's why I picked it because, you know, like I said, pizza pills um, have been on my mind right now. And, and so is getting these planes working. Um, you know, I, I got the number four Stanley, um, which is a smoothing plane, but it, it can be very general purpose. Um, and then I have a number five Jack, um, which is a, a Jack plane is your universal plane. Yeah. Um, it can do a little bit of jointing, can do a little bit of rough stock. So I think I might set up my number four for more of the smoothing work, um, the more of the finer work, and set up the jack for a more aggressive work. And I, I'll probably just get out there and, and grab some scrap um, stock and and actually take take a sharpie and mark out how the grain's running, and and really look at it and, and concentrate and just trying to figure it out and and play with it. Um, you know, and if I decide I don't, don't like it, well, at least I got these planes, uh, you know, preed up again and de-rusted. I can set them up on the shelf and, and use that as some inspiration every time I'm in the shop thinking of my grandfather. So I agree. I've got the planes too. I've got the four and five. I've got a number seven, um, got a couple block planes. I've, I've, I was in the, the bug of, okay, I got to get some hand tools just so I can start practicing. Well, then I started my channel and <laughs> a lot of that learning curve kind of took took a back seat so I can get my channel off the ground. So I've got a whole bunch of planes that I need to uh, fix up and, and get set up as well. So I may have to check out that channel just so I can see it. Um, I know this is uh, off the, the list that we've got, but Nick Ferry did another video on uh, uh, restoring a, a plane of his and made you, it look really beautiful you too. You just read my mind because I was going to say that too. Like he He probably went in did a little more in depth than what I'm going to do just because I don't have the access to the media blast cabinet mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. And the paint finishes on mine are still pretty good. Um, but I am going to change like the totes, um, the, the, in, in the front handle, they're plastic and you can actually get from Lee Valley for free. The templates for, for each one of the Stanley, um, hand planes, to make a new back tote for it. Oh, that's um, sweet. So I'm going to make it out of wood and and uh, replace them. And then I'll probably jump on the lathe and turn um, a corresponding piece for the front knob. So it, it'll it be interesting, and I, I may or may not shoot some video of it. I don't know. Um, I may do it, and if it doesn't turn out, then I'll just never release the video. Either that or do one so you can get the hang of it and then do your other one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> On a video anyway. All right, well, what's your last video? And when I say last video, I'm really going to mean last two videos because you sent me something <laughs> with two parts. So well, I yeah, in was, good faith only give one part out. It was kind of a continuation, but this was the outside of the woodworking realm. And I, I always look forward to these posts. Um but it, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to have to be 100% woodworking on YouTube. So uh, I found a uh, world champion Frisbee trickster or trick trick artist. Um, and uh, he actually uh, collaborated with another set of YouTubers that does um, basketball trick shots. And it's not dude perfect. I know you guys are thinking of those. But uh, these, these guys are young. They're um, teenagers. Uh, the name of their channel is Legendary Shots, and uh, Brody Smith is the frisbee trick trick artist, and they collabed and did a Greatest Game of Horse Part One and Part Two, and it is just amazing what they can do with uh, a basketball and a frisbee. The frisbee, especially, <laughs> they're standing on tops of like stadiums and, and just hurling a Frisbee just kind of randomly and making it into a basketball goal yeah. or 
it's, it's, that's pretty it's, insane. It, it's insane. I, I'm just kind of like jaw dropped. I'm like, well, what did he just do? I mean, I throw a frisbee and hope it goes in a direction signed kind of where I want it to go. <laughs> These guys are like landing it in a basketball goal and stuff. Yeah, or hitting a frisbee with a bat and landing it into a yeah. uh, goal. It, it's crazy. But yeah, I'm. I, I like the the outside the the box sometimes, and and I have a subscription to Dude Perfect and Brody Smith and Legendary Shots just to kind of keep it interesting and and kind of see the the energy that they produce their videos with, especially people like Dude Perfect because their their videos are their camera angles and their energy levels and all of that just gets me inspired to make my videos that much better. So that's one reason I I kind of watch other videos outside the woodworking realm is just to get inspiration on how to make mine better yeah all right well um you don't have to go search for these videos um we're actually created a youtube playlist for you you can head over to to our youtube channel um woodshop 101 podcast and find the uh playlist called um I think it's uh, videos of episode 14 or episode 14 videos. Um, or we'll include the link in our show notes. So you just head to the website and there'll be a link and it'll take you straight to the playlist. And highly encourage you to go through all um, 11 of those videos because I'm including the second part to Drew's last one. Um, <laughs> and, and just give them a watch because you never know when you f- will f- either find a new creator to start watching um, find an inspiration, uh, an idea. Um, and we would definitely like to know what, what you think about those videos more. We want to know what videos you suggest we watch, you know, send us, um, an email, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you got it. I'm sure we'll find it with a link, um, or even a title to, to a video you want us to check out. And, who knows? Maybe we'll start trying to highlight one video um, every show or something, um, and put put it in the show notes. You know, we started this to help um, get uh, the 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 content from the YouTube woodworkers out there, um, and you know, why not start trying to check out some videos? So we would definitely like to hear from you. Yeah, and uh, the the comments that people leave and it, it not only helps us, but it helps, like Jeremy said, the people that are listening to us. Uh, people like uh, Paul Mayette, he's actually given us some kickback uh, on our last video, um, basically letting us know that the the episode that we had with uh, Brian was a great episode. He said, "Thanks for all uh, all the shout outs that you've been giving me." Uh, he said, "In regards to the April Wilkerson episode, I did miss it." And listened to it for a week or so later and just didn't comment because I had watched it late. Well, that's no excuse there, Paul. Uh, <laughs> we'll take your comments whenever we get them. That's right. You slacker. I mean, we put out show late and you still listen to us and comment Very on late. it. Yeah. <laughs> so. He says, I, I do watch her channel all the time, though. She is on my regular list. Uh, he also said, great topic with Brian. Uh, he was a good guest to have, easy to listen to. Hearing the different paths you guys take on plans was very interesting. So I guess Brian has a really good mellow tone voice, that you know, good radio voice. Yeah. Put Paul to sleep. <laughs> uh, you know, somebody he's either going to count sheep at night or he's going to listen to somebody. <laughs> so why not listen? Exactly. All right. Well, if you guys would like your question answered on air, guaranteed or you just want to hang out with us after the show, then you can become a patron over at our Patreon campaign at www.patreon.com forward slash woodshop101. And you can enter um, as low as $1 a month, and I think all the way up to uh, $60. Um, And each one of those come with different reward levels. And, uh, you know, I realize some people don't want to get into a monthly commitment. There's nothing wrong with that. So I think... uh, I'm going to start looking at some other options and maybe the next show um, or, the, or you know, maybe the next two shows, I'll let you guys know some other options that we came up with for you guys to help support the show. Um, you know, it, it kind of offsets some of the costs for us. You know, we got to pay for 
um, hosting fees and stuff like that. Um, you know, and it, it helps keep, keeps the lights on here and, you know, it'll, it'll help us bring better content to you. So, and plus you'll get rewards for it too. I mean, yeah. it's, I mean even though we're going to search other avenues, uh, the rewards will still, still play into effect. We'll just have to work that stuff out. But yeah, the monthly commitment sometimes is a problem. And, um, I think definitely just a just a simple one time donation uh, way of doing things, or uh, I don't know. We'll just have to kick it around, but definitely we will make it a little bit easier on you guys and still give you rewards at the same time. Exactly. All right. Well, Drew, if you want to give them the contact info, and we'll get off here and stop bugging them for the night. Well, considering that we procrastinated on doing this, <laughs> well, it was inadvertent procrastination. Yeah, but we'll have another show next week. Hopefully, we'll get back on schedule. And uh, for next week, we may or may not have a guest. Um, so don't be disappointed if we don't have one. Um, but it might give us a little bit of a reset to, to get a, a, a lineup of guests, too. Yeah. So. And, and a lo- right now, a lot of the guests are going to be hard because a lot, and, and when I say a lot, there's going to be several handfuls of YouTube woodworkers heading to WIA um, here in a few weeks. And people are going to... They're trying to get ready for that, and to get somebody to dedicate um, an evening with us is um, going to be a little more difficult over the next few weeks um, until that until that event is over. Um, so we'll do our best to to still get those guests on for you, but just know that's a big thing that's coming up that's occupying um, the minds of a lot of woodworkers right now. Yeah, including myself. So. Uh, whether or not we can get a show out around WIA time, um, if our schedule falls around that, we might have to postpone a, a week. But I am also one of the woodworkers that are going to WIA. Uh, so if you guys are in the area or are planning on attending, be sure and stop by our booth that we're going to have, too, where you can meet some of the other YouTube woodworkers. And uh, I'd like to shake your hand and get to know you a little bit better. So. Well, uh Basically, the, the contact, if you want to get a hold of either me or Jeremy, we both have Facebook pages. We both have Twitter pages, even though Jeremy is not that versed in Twitter. Hey, I'm, I'm becoming a little more versed. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, he does have Facebook. He likes that a lot. Uh, so you can find links for our Facebook pages and Twitter pages uh, in the show notes. We also have a website for uh, the Woodshop 101 channel, uh, which is woodshop101podcast.com slash listen uh, that'll take you to uh, links that you can stream on your computer uh, we also have a YouTube channel and uh, there will be a link to that as well just search Woodshop 101 podcast in the search uh, you'll find our link for that um, let's see we, we like to post our videos or our uh, audio podcasts about every other week uh, but this one and, and prior ones that we've had, we've had to uh, postpone a couple weeks, which means we do like two shows in a row. Uh, so don't be, don't be concerned if you don't get one on uh, the second week because that does happen to us sometimes. Um, if you want to leave us a question, you can go to our Skype uh, and search Woodshop 101 Podcast and leave us a voicemail there. Or you can uh, send us an email at woodshop101podcast at gmail.com. Uh, either way, we're going to try and feature those questions on air. Uh, so if you leave, a, leave us a voicemail, you'll hear your voicemail message on air. And if you have a question through email, we'll read it out and answer it. Uh, we always look forward to those. So um, hopefully you guys can give us some more feedback on our prior episodes as well as our uh, episodes that we just got done with. So, guys, um, that's it for me. From Jeremy and myself, we guys want to wish you well. And uh, please remember to be safe in your shops. And we'll see you guys next time. And, Jeremy, one, two, three. Boom. 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 Create myself a timeline. Like, all right, here's the deadline to finish this project. Here's the deadline to finish that project. Um so I know where I'm at in, in time for those three months because weeks just tend to fly by right now, um, especially with two kids. So I'm yeah, gonna, it's kind of funny you brought that stuff up because remember we had talked about goal setting once before and my wife and I have been actually going over 
uh, in our heads and what we need to do to set goals to make our lives a little easier and make my channel flow better and all yeah. my projects come come forth easier instead of having to think of them at the last minute. So, I, yeah. I, I think, you know, I've, we've talked about, like, I really want to get into more videos um, and I just never find the time to be able to complete a project start to finish. So I think over the next few months as I do these smaller projects, um, as, as smaller sub-projects within those bigger projects pop up, um, I'm going to record those things, some kind of like tips and tricks and put those out there just to start creating that content and getting it out there. Um, and one of the ones I know I'm going to do, um, is on the pizza pill. I have a knot in one of the wood and I'm going to fill it. Um, and, and so I'm going to record that on how to, um, stabilize a knot, um, in a piece of lumber. You not only may end up being a five or 10 minute video, maybe a three minute video, but it's something to get content out there. Um, and that way I'm not, I'm just kind of taking that end goal and, and modifying it a little bit to help me get to that larger piece. Um, cause if I keep saying, Oh, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I never find the time to record a project, then I'm just going to keep saying I'm going to do it. So I might as well take smaller steps to get, get there instead of trying to do it all at once. So I know exactly how you feel. So there, so I, I take it, there's probably going to be a lot of hopefully moving parts and, and shuffling around and, and schedule changes between my show and your show. And, and hopefully in the end game, you know, at the end of the year, we'll both be in a better place and we can look back and see the leaps and bounds that we've gone through. Exactly. So, so as you guys can tell, we've got a lot going on, <laughs> a lot going on, but uh, let's let's go ahead and get down to the nuts and bolts of this uh, particular episode. Our, our topic, like Jeremy had mentioned, is basically uh, five videos that we have picked on YouTube to um, that, that we like and watch and want to refer you guys to go ahead and watch them. And you might even find subscribing to their channel. Um, the five videos that, that I picked really aren't uh, all woodworking. Some of them are, are kind of outside the realm of woodworking but they're still fun and uh, I always look forward to a new post whenever they whenever they uh, put one out uh, Jeremy are all yours uh, woodworking related or do you have some out out of the box thinking videos too um no um, all mine some form or fashion are woodworking related or have no they're all woodworking related yeah That's <laughs> the, the base of it the ba- I mean the base of it is building something out of wood, whether they built, use other types of material in it, but something is still being created out of wood um, or has to do with woodworking. And, and which is kind of funny that, you know, when, when we approached the subject, you know, I, I just said, you know, let's, let's just pick five videos. And in back of my head, I'm thinking, well, we'll just pick five woodworking videos and you send me your five videos. I'm like, yo, that, that, that's just crazy to see the different, ways our minds think and you went with like (laughs) five videos that i think somebody will benefit from um you know whether it be woodworking or or any kind of information i went with okay what's the five best woodworking videos that i think somebody will like to watch and i mean believe it or not i I actually sat down and watched all five of your videos and (laughs) i i intentionally didn't send you the links to mine um because maybe that'll give you something to look forward to after the show to go watch. There you go. Guys um, that I work with, and we knocked out an entire roof in about two and a half or three hours, um, which is quick. Mm-hmm. But you get people out there that that can take direction pretty easily and know how to work quickly. Um and we we just knocked it out. I mean, mind you, we didn't have to take off an existing roof. It's a new structure, and I'll put a picture down in the show notes for you guys to to take a look at that. Um, you know, it's a new construction, a, a new construction. So all we had to do was n- nail the plywood down, roll out the felt paper, and then throw on shingles. Um, you know, there we didn't have to do any of the finishing work. We didn't have to. Um, put any of the um, exhaust um, vents on the, on the top or anything. Somebody else will come in and do all that. 
So it was good to get outside the shop early in the morning and get something done. Um, and it just kind of motivates you to do something else. And now, you know, I want to figure out a way to do maybe a, a furniture build or something like that or, or, or um, something small, maybe do an auction to donate some money to the Habitat for Humanity um, or donate a piece of furniture to one of the people that's receiving a house. I don't know. I've kind of been thinking about it um, over the last few days. But, um, you know, like I was telling you earlier, Drew, that besides that, I haven't had a lot of time. My son's been in and out of the doctor. Um, in fact, he was in the hospital on Friday uh, for being sick. So, you know, once we get him well, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plan on moving in the direction of doing something that will benefit Habitat for Humanity some way um, or another. And then I'm going to start cranking out these projects because um, we are possibly going to be moving in about three months um, because I'll be getting out of the Coast Guard. Yeah, and that'll we, come, and, come faster than you think. Yeah, and if we move out of the area, um, I can't. I don't really want to be building a commission somewhere else and have to drive it back down here to deliver it. So I want to get those commissions done um, and, and get them delivered. And, you know, I'll still take commissions here if I can, if they're small enough and manageable enough that I can mail them and not worry about, about that. But we really don't know what's going to happen with us in, in about three months. So, I got to get moving and get some stuff done, um, get some projects done because, you know, when that three months comes and we go, maybe go to Dallas or wherever we go, I don't want the movers showing up and packing up half completed projects it, because you never know the outcome of that project once, once it moves, you know, once I get it delivered to me again, you know, that half finished table may not make it, you know, it mm. may fall apart. Um, so, you know, that, that hall table, that sofa table, it, it will get finished in the next three months. It has to. So. All right. I'll hold you to it. Yeah. Well, ho- hopefully. I, it, that's one of the quicker projects that, that could be done. Like, I just need to cut, cut the top to final dimension, bevel the edges, sand the top, and then throw on some paint and stain like it honestly in a total of like two or three days worth of work could be done. But like I said before, it's not really print bringing in any money. Like it's not a guarantee. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's gonna, it, it's gonna sit back. I don't really know what to do with it right now. So I'm in a rush to finish it. <laughs> so once, once it comes up and I'm actually going to sit down I'm probably going to get a calendar and, and for actually covering up my windows uh, in the garage because I don't I don't like people being able to come up to those windows and look inside and see what's in there, uh, so they're just the right width and depth to cover up the windows, uh, and I couldn't put any cabinetry there anyway, so uh, they were kind of a bonus cabinet. Yeah, well, and plus, you know, when you record um, video, it's hard to control the light when you have light coming in from the window plus your overhead lights and that's always changing Mm -hmm. you know as the sun goes down or or, or goes up it casts shadows through that window so it's going to be harder um so being able to control that light and not allow that light in is definitely a plus and probably will lighten the load on you when it comes to editing your videos definitely especially since my router table is over in that area uh, I have to be creative whenever I was filming using my router, but now I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Well, there's been a lot going on in my shop lately um, and outside my shop. Um, I've, due to being out of town the last few weekends, um, kind of wiped out the last part of of July and the first part of August. Um I've yet to to finish the uh, jewelry armoire for my wife. Um, that's going to be set to finish hopefully this week. 
Um, and I started a few pizza pills. Um, so that's going to come next. So th- there's been a lot of starting things, not a lot of finishing, but you know, I, I get about on my days off and that's the really the only time I can work in the shop right now because I only get an hour or two a, a day. So we're looking at an hour or two a week to get in the shop because it gets so hot here in the afternoon. We're, we're going through a extremely, um, bad heat spell right now and we'll get up and it'll be 106 in the afternoon I just can't work in that i'm i'm miserable so my best foot forward wouldn't be put that work wouldn't be as fun and i'm gonna get burnt out again um so i'm actually going tomorrow to pick up an air conditioner and i'm gonna be installing an ac this week in the shop and hopefully that will um bring it down to a manageable temperature to be able to work in, out there for a prolonged amount of time. And, you know, I, I really didn't want to do that, especially because I'm in a rental house. So I bought a portable AC that I'm, I'm going to have to build some duct work um, to exhaust it since I don't have a window. But I had to do something. I'm, I'm, I just took in another large commission um, when I, and I know I keep saying I don't want to do that, but it's a re- repeat business and there's few customers that I'm going to continue to do work for them just because they're, they're good friends and you know, I, they're coming to me for a reason. I've all, obviously produced good enough work to, for them that they want to come back. So I'm not going to turn them down. Um, and he gives me a lot of flexibility on the design, um, aspect and, and pretty much any material that I want to use. Um, so in order to get that done and get that fireplace mantle for my neighbor done, I've got to get some AC out in that shop so I can work. Um, so I can work at nights too. So even on my days that I don't, don't work my day job, I can get out and work for a few hours at night. So there's been a lot of behind the scenes things going. Um, not a lot of woodworking in the last two weeks. Except for last Thursday, I actually jumped out with Habitat for Humanity and um, roofed a house for them. So that's cool. That roofing business is hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. But you know, I, I went out there with a bunch of guys. Welcome to Woodshop 101, a woodworking audio podcast here toward the hobby weekend woodworker. Our hosts for the show are Jeremy Crawford and Drew Shore. Join these two different craftsmen for a lighthearted banter about everything in woodworking, online education, and how they produce content. Topics could include the latest news, tips, tricks, and designs to include furniture, crafts, and shop projects. Welcome to episode number 14. Today we're going to do something a little different. Um, Instead of picking a topic and kind of talking to you guys um, about that topic, We've actually each picked out about five videos from YouTube that we really enjoy, and we're going to kind of talk about them and uh, tell you guys what we think about them and why you should go over and watch them. All right. I would also like to remind you, if you listen to the show on iTunes, to please uh, give us a five-star rating. It helps us reach a greater audience. All right. So let's jump into it. Um, I think we're going to try to keep this show pretty quick today. Um, It's been about three weeks since our last episode. Um, Summer's starting to wrap up and things are just getting hectic. Um, But we definitely didn't want to miss a show. And we thought doing something a little different would would, uh, lighten the load and and give you something else to listen to and then want to go watch. So how are you today, Drew? I'm doing pretty good. I've been busy just like you, which is one reason why... Recording the past few weeks has been kind of difficult. Yeah, yeah every, everything's getting pretty hectic, and seems like it's either my job or plans that have come up that we do on the weekends. Uh, I I totally get that. I mean, it's like every day there's something else popping up, and I guess that's the price you pay for having a family. Um, and you know, I think that's why we started this podcast together because we're both pretty flexible. Um, we have families, and we know that we can't stick to a rigorous schedule all the time. Yeah, so, rigorous is a good word for it. <laughs> yeah. It's we're very flexible and fluid here. <laughs> so, 
yeah, and so most of you know that we record on Thursday nights. Um, every other, the fir- pretty much the first and the third week of the month. Here we are um, recording the first episode um, for August, and we're floating in the second week, and we're actually recording on Sunday afternoon. Um, so when we talk fluid, we we can change it around a little bit and, and make do and still get you guys a quality show out. So let's uh, talk quickly about what's going on in our shops. Drew, what do you got going on? Um, right now, I'm still in an organizational phase. Uh, I am actually in the middle of recording a video for my channel for the first time in about a month and a half because, like I said, I took some time off and now I'm trying to get back into it. But I recently acquired some uh, Pixis cabinets or drug cabinets from a, a hospital that um, they were kind of upgrading their systems because the Pixis cabinets that they owned, the business went out of business, so they weren't able to get them serviced anymore, so they had to buy a new cabinet. And my brother got them all free, and he ended up getting six of them. And I took two. My dad took one, and my brother kept the other three. Uh, but they are, they're filled with drawers. I mean, from head to toe, they're filled with drawers, and they're about 74 inches tall by about 24 inches wide. And it's about 24 inches deep. So it's it, tons of storage. And uh, I had to rig it up to where I could open up the drawers because those Pixis cabinets are, are locked from the inside. And you have to figure out a way to get them to open. <laughs> so I've been doing that today. And uh, loading them up with some of the things that are in my toolbox because it's falling apart. So right now, that's, that's pretty much it. It's just organization and recording my first video in about a month and a half. Are these cabinets going to replace the plans to do some more shop cabinets re- to replace the uh, black racks that you have? Uh, no. <laughs> no, they are. Um, but uh, like you said, let's just get down to it. Like, let's go um, one video a piece until we get through the, through the list. All right. So what's, well, let's, uh, start, let's start with you. Go ahead. All right, I think my first video is from I Like to Make Stuff and – I, I've been following his channel, and if y'all didn't know, he's part of the Making It podcast. Um, his is how to make gliders, and this is one of those ones that I said kind of uses other material. He makes a glider, like just a little handheld glider on a CNC machine out of balsa wood, um, and he makes one out of styrofoam, and kind of shows you the co- compare and contrast of how they fly, um, and... He, he makes it on a CNC, but you can definitely make it using like a little coping saw or a fret saw. Um, you could even make it on a band saw or a scroll saw. Um, but sometimes I just like watching those little videos. I, I try to get ideas like, well, what could I make that my son would enjoy doing along with me? Well, I could go out and make a couple of these and let them decorate them and we'll go outside and fly them. So it, he definitely takes you along on the build process, not knowing what he's doing. And he tells you, <laughs> I don't know. Like, well, I'm, I'm just making it and we'll see how it comes out. And so I, I like that kind of shooting from the hip and let's, let's see. Cause in reality, that's what a lot of us do in the shop. We get out there and we just start making something and hopefully it goes the way we want it to go. Mm-hmm. So, all right, what's your first video? Um, first one that I came across, uh, was April Wilkerson's, uh, compass rose stool. And it's kind of funny that yours was a CNC project too, because that's what this one is. Um, she actually put together her X carve that she had sitting in her shop in the box for quite some time because she never had the time to put it together. And now that she's got her shop all cleaned up, she put her, uh, CNC together and did a project with it to try it out. And this one in particular was a little almost like a milking stool. It's just three or, I think it's a four-legged stool, actually. And uh, she engraved a compass rose on the very top. And uh, it actually took her a few tries to get it right, but, um, you know, you're, you're going to get that when you're first learning that thing anyway. Yeah, well, but, and plus uh, you got to build the CNC, so you're going to have to work out the bugs of you actually building that and put in it, putting it together. Yeah, and there's been a lot of those inventable CNC X-carves uh, out there right now so you're going to see a lot of videos but this one in particular i thought was a very um if you acquired a cnc was going to be a very um diy kind of project and that's what april's all about uh she even 
learned that straight leg stools were not as attractive as a compound mitered stool. So um, she even showed you how to do all that. So I was I was kind of impressed with how it how it came out and how the CNC made the top of the stool look. I don't know how comfortable it is to sit on. <laughs> it, it looks <laughs> amazing. All that I mean, there's a lot of detail to it. Yeah, there there is a lot of detail and. I, I actually reached out to April I, and I told her, you know, she should have um, filled it with like an epoxy, um, maybe colored tint epoxy. But I think it would have looked really cool having it um, tinted. Um, you know, that, that would give a different perspective and maybe make it a little flatter, a little smoother to sit on. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I mean, I don't know how comfortable it is to sit on with all the different nooks and crannies because there's... There's a lot of carving out of that. I guess you can always find your direction on your butt. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, what's your next video, dude? All right, mine, you know, I talked about I'm, I'm making a couple pizza pills. So pizza pills have been on the mind. Um, and, and the design, I finally decided to model mine after, and I don't know if it'll be exactly, is Mark Spagnolo's. Um, but I definitely um, looked around on YouTube to kind of see different ones creators have made 